Okay, so now we're going to use MATLAB to demonstrate some of the concepts that we've been talking about. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of functions. Maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't. It'll make your life um, pretty easy. The first thing we can do is use the dsolve command to actually solve for the, diff the solution to the differential equation. So, for example, I could say s, or say solve solution, equals dsolve. And then I can actually just type in the differential equation I want to solve as a string. And it uses the capital D operator to mean a derivative. So if you say d2y, that means take the second derivative of y, plus say dy, plus y equals zero. So that's a homogeneous differential equation written into MATLAB speak, symbolic language here. So it's y double dot plus, so that's y double dot d2y plus y dot dy plus y equals zero. Then, if you want the uh, specific solution uh, evaluated as initial conditions, you have to specify the initial condition. So we'll say dy at zero equals zero. So I have zero initial velocity. And I'll give it some initial position, y of zero equals, say, one. And I'll go ahead and hit enter, and boom, there's the solution symbolically to the differential equation. Uh, I can play around with this if I want to try to simplify it and make it look nice. There's the simple uh, command where you say simple of soul that gives you go through, which tries to simplify it out, right? It tries a bunch of different things. And then if I want to be able to look at it, I can use the pretty command for the answer that, that uh, simple gave back. So now it's noticed there's, and this is an important part just to remember, right? The, there's sines and cosines. Right? And then that whole thing is being divided by an exponential, which is a positive exponential in t, so it's t over 2, which is the same as multiplying that sines and cosines by uh, an exponentially k function. So what were the, the roots of the characteristic equation that we were looking at? Well, this is y, y double dot plus dy uh, plus y, or y double dot plus y dot plus y equals 0. So that would have a characteristic equation that was just uh, y uh, lambda squared plus lambda plus y equals zero. Well, the way to represent that in MATLAB is to say p is just a vector, and you start with the highest order uh, derivative, uh, or, or sorry, highest order um, exponent. So if you're representing a polynomial of order two, start with lambda squared. So this is one, and you put the coefficient that would be multiplied in there. So you just keep putting all the coefficients in. So one, one, one would represent a polynomial that was given by lambda squared plus uh, lambda plus 1. Say that. And now I can use the roots command, which will find the roots numerically of any uh, polynomial that you get it. Again, I'm representing it that way. And boom, those are the roots. So that's uh, just using the quadratic equation with the right that as well. So notice I have negative real part and then plus or minus um, a uh, some complex part, uh, some imaginary part. And I could plot that on the uh, complex plane if I wanted to. Um, but we would see that those are very similar to the, um, uh, the, uh, the poles that, oh, sorry, the poles or roots of, uh, that we had in the previous examples. All right, so now that we have the, the roots, uh, which are the same as the poles, right? Let's say that again. They're the roots of the characteristic equation. And we just established that they have negative real part, and plus or minus an imaginary part. Now we can actually go ahead and plot those, and we can use the uh, what's called the easy plot command, and we can pass in this uh, uh, symbolic object, which is really a string. So I'll pass in the solution, and then I can specify over the range over which I want to actually plot that, and go ahead and boom, and let me pull up the bigger window there, and let me. Okay, so there's our solution uh, plotted over time. So I start at one, and boom, decays away, and eventually it's, it's going to zero. So it's going to I can put the hold on, and notice that um, this one dips down to about minus uh, 0.2 at about three and a half seconds or so. Now let's go back in and change the differential equation we're looking at. So instead of uh, d 
dy plus y, let's do say uh, 4 times dy. I mean, the same initial conditions. Get the solution to that. And then I can again use the easy plot command. And I'm using the up and down arrow right this through my commands. Windows uh, 7. Okay. I can go ahead and plot that solution overlaid with the other solution and go back up to the figure window. And notice this one comes way down to about minus 0.45 at about one and a half seconds. And then it goes away and the data down finally gets out. What's interesting to note about this is that the, t the time it takes to actually decay away, if you were to draw in an exponential envelope, doesn't really change, it's just that the frequency has been changing. Well, that matches up with this idea that we had uh, related to the, uh, to find it, the damped frequency. Right, so that was here. So when omega n changes, which we changed, we change it from 1 to 2, then that means the damped frequency changes. But notice this term over here, uh, we'll have to see if that changed. It doesn't look like it did. Um, anyhow, so back to here, what we're saying is that as the damped frequency increases, then I see a higher frequency uh, decay. Okay, but I'm still decaying. So what we've done, we should look at where the roots actually are. We change the roots from, I can just supply the polynomial directly, from looking at the roots of 111 to 114. And notice it turns out that the roots compared to here, the uh, negative, uh, the real part didn't change at all, and that's really where the decay rate comes from. But the, uh, the damped frequency, the omega d term, you know, doubled essentially, which makes sense. Um, from the point of view of if we didn't change the decay rate, then omega n uh, squared, uh, sorry, omega n doubled from 1 to 2, so that would be double again. Um, if we want to look at how the, 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 uh, the real part changes, we can go back in here now and say, well, let's change the damping from, say, 1 to 2, and I can solve that again. And if I look at the roots of the polynomial, which is now 1, 2, 4. Now notice the, the, the real part here, which is the k rate, the exponential term, which is here, change. I change from t over to t. And now I again can <coughs> go ahead and plot uh, the solution. All right, so now we can go and look at that window here. And we see that, notice before, um, there were a couple different, let's identify which is which solution. Uh, this one here is the first one we did. Uh, this is the second one. And this is the one we just plotted. So notice that this one, it appears to be going to zero a little bit faster than the other ones, right? Uh, but the frequency of oscillation is kind of in between those two. Well, that's indicated here by this, this k rate, right? It's e to the minus t instead of e to the minus t over 2, so it's going a little faster. And then the frequency is kind of in between the 1.9 and the 4.6. So there you have it. No, looking at the location of the roots of the characteristic equation, which are also known as the poles of this system, gives us a lot of information about how the system responds over time.